So hi, everybody, Erin Johnson with Outstanding Ohio, and we're here today with a Learn and Grow series on how to start your own podcast. And our speaker, Derek Clinton, is uh, with Hindsight 101 Media. He's a video and audio consultant. He has a YouTube channel with over 10,000 subscribers called Hindsight 101 Media, and he also helps produce, edit, uh, and consult on podcasts. So he has quite a bit of experience in that area. He's an IT manager by day and has a wife and three kids and lives in Berea. So thank you for taking the time today, Derek, to teach us a little bit about podcasts. Thank you, Aaron. And uh, with that said, uh, thank you everyone for joining and taking time out of your day. Uh, I wanted to say that first, there's a lot of information based on the poll that we sent out. Uh, everybody wanted to hear a little bit of everything. So I'm gonna to try to condense it all, but normally when I give these out for these topics, it, it, I'm condensing about four hours into about an hour. So I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna, some of the topics I'm gonna to cover very broadly, but if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. But then also, if there's something you want me to deep dive further, you can either contact me directly or we can set up another one of these if there's enough interest. So let's get started. So with the first thing I, I wanna make sure everyone knows, and I did this also with when I did the YouTube presentation, is I wanna set expectations. And the thing that I wanted, I wanted to talk about that is doing a podcast is very rewarding. It's fun. I love it just for the fact that you can put your message out there and people want to listen to it. And there's very few barriers of entry as say 15 years ago when, you know, you wanted to make a radio station and it took all this thousand dollars of equipment. Now you could just open up your phone and download an app and start a podcast. So it's very easy. But the other thing that a lot of people may, may forget is one, uh, podcasting and and there's so many different hosting companies it's not like youtube where youtube you post a video it's on one platform you can search for it with podcasting it's spread across the internet so the problem with that is it's very hard to search for a particular podcast because your podcast could be in one place but not the other and if people don't listen to it on that that certain hosting site or that certain some people call them pod catchers then they won't find you so that's where you have to make sure you put yourself out there everywhere as much as possible. And I'll talk about all that. But then also you want to set expectations as far as who's listening. Because it's so hard to search for, you're gonna have to you're gonna have a small audience unless you promote yourself. If you just put your podcast out there and expect people to find you, it's probably not gonna happen. So you you do have to work on getting yourself out there. And I discussed that as well, but just know that you're Unlike, say, if you did a YouTube channel, YouTube will promote your channel to other people. Podcasts don't really work that way, so you do have to put a little work to get yourself out there. So just wanted to, just wanted to talk about that. But um, let's start with the beginning. Uh, the first thing that you want to do when you're starting your podcast is determining your topic. What do you want to talk about? And the thing that I, I usually like to go with is what can you talk about for five years? If you don't think you can talk about something for five years, because you want to plan long term, you want to know that uh, this podcast is going to last for a while. You're, you're not going to be an orphan podcast where a lot of people get into it maybe the third episode in and either it's too hard or they don't want to talk about it anymore. They, they just abandon it. So our, my hope for you is that you're going to do this for five years or more. So you need to figure out something you can constantly talk about and there's different topics you can talk about. Now you can pivot at some point, but you have to be careful about that because you will lose your audience if you pivot to something else. And sometimes you have to in order to grow, but you have to be prepared to lose that lose a, a certain section of your audience. But once you, you figure out your top topic and whatever you can talk about, and don't worry about saturation or anything like that because um, you may have a piece of information that someone wants to hear, or maybe someone finds your podcast over somebody else's. So I, I never worry about saturation. Say, well, there's too many people doing finance or cooking because like I said, they may find yours, but no someone else's. If you promote it better than them, well then you have a, you have a leg up. But then once you have your podcast topic, we have to talk about what is the name. And that's, this is, this is a, a series of three things that we're going to talk about that are very important. That goes, again, on the whole search topic. One, you have to make sure that people can identify your podcast based off your name. And what I mean by that is I don't want to use the Derek Clinton show. No one has any idea what that's about. Unless, unless you're Joe Rogan, then you, know, you can do that. But uh, for, for most of us starting a podcast, no one knows who we are. So then we need to make sure, you know, this is the finance channel or this is all about finance. Whatever it is, you need to make sure it's clear and concise that people will know what your podcast is about. And stay. And you, you want to try to stay away from branding of certain things if it doesn't clearly explain. Like if you want to use your company, as long as your company does explain what it's about, 
that's fine. If not, you may want to maybe put that at the end or just put that in the description, what your company is. But then the title actually refers to what you want to, what you, what you actually want to talk about. Um, the other thing that it's a big no-no is don't put podcast in your title. So don't put the, the Derek Clinton Show podcast. And the reason why I say that is because when, you're do, when someone's doing a search, so let's do this. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. And please remind me if I forget to take it off. I have a bad habit of doing that. Can you see my uh, browser? Thank you. Okay. So we're going to go to Spotify right here. And Spotify, I'm going to type in just podcast. And if you scroll down, this is the problem. So many people put podcast in their title. So when someone's searching so when someone's searching for you, they're going to find out all this other miscellaneous junk that comes up because you put the word podcast in your title. If you just put cooking, then people can find you a lot easier if you put in the cooking channel. But if you put in the cooking channel podcast, and that's how people will refer to you, then it'll come up with all this other stuff beside you. So it just makes it harder to find. So never put podcast in your title if you want people to find you. Um, just put the name of the title. It's just assumed it's a podcast or you can tell them, but they don't have to search for that because it, it, trust me, in all these search engines, it's a lot easier and people always put podcast in there and it just kind of muddies the water when they're trying to find you. But on the same hand, let's say we wanted to do cooking. So this brings up the cooking podcast and then usually it has something cooking in the title and there's also a little metadata that says this is a cooking channel. So that's kind of how you want people to find your channel if they don't know you by name, but they're looking for a cooking channel. This is this is how they're going to find you. So that's why you want it to be clear and concise, because they may not know what Derek Clinton's about, but they they know they want to see something about cooking. So. After that, you want to make sure that you have your your podcast art. Now, this is a this is also another thing that will that ties onto your name and the search topic, because the first thing people are going to see is your art. As you can see in Spotify, that was big and bold. And then the, 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 the title of your show is underneath. So it has to be something eye catching. It has to be something that will explain what your podcast is about. A lot of people use their own picture, different things like that. And for certain branding, that is, that's, that's fine. But a lot of those people have a name behind themselves so they can use their picture. But for you, whatever it's going to be, maybe you want to do finance, you do a couple dollar signs or some money or whatever, but just something that gives the, the audience an idea of what they're looking at. And very quickly and then it has to be eye-catching too because like there's going to be thousands of podcasts that are about finance why do i pick yours well the first one is it's going to be eye-catching because i saw the art the second one um the title the description and then is this something i want to talk about if i want to talk about you know um 20 something finance but this is for you know retiring then i'm going to skip ahead so you want to make sure you're clear you're concise and then sometimes you want to niche down so you're not so general because if you're general and someone's looking for a specific thing, such as investing or something like that. And then they may not, they may not be able to get that from your description if you're very general. So you want to, you kind of want to condense down to that. Um, then after that, you want to get your social media wrapped up. Now you can reach out to all the social medias you want. You can do TikTok, uh, Twitter, Instagram, all of them. Uh, but I, if, if you really want to reach out to all of them, I would advise against that because it's very hard. Unless you're paying someone to manage all that, managing different social media accounts is very hard. You, um, you also want to lock up these social media accounts so you, you have your name because anybody and everybody can take your name whenever they want to. So you want to make sure you sure up those names. And a lot of times you might find it's already used. So you may have to tweak it a little bit for your channel, for your podcast. Um, but with that, because a lot of people think, oh, it's easy to, to be on all the social medias. I'll just post the same thing. Um, hey, my podcast is out today. To, that's, that's not the way you want to do it. You're just spamming and no one really cares about that. You have to personalize your posts to those different platforms based off of what they do. So if you go to YouTube, people don't really like audio, just audio. They want video. So you may have to, some people a animate their, um, their podcasts so it looks more pleasing instead of just listening to someone um, talk. And then also with uh, Instagram, TikTok, they have limits to what you can put out there. So you may only do a snippet of your, your information or with Twitter, you may just do like a little ad or a little a picture and a blurb. So you have to tailor it towards each of them. 
but if you want to do them all you can with the idea that at some point you're going to condense down to one or two wherever you get the biggest audience because that's what you're looking for whichever one works the best for you and your your business if it's a business and then um you want to deep dive into those now later down the line if you want to expand you can but you just really want to focus on one or two no more than that because as i said it becomes very difficult so once you have all that put together you want to talk about your format the format of the show uh comp comprises many things so i think there was a question uh when people were registering about uh what format should i have so you, it, that's up to you it depends on uh, whether you're going to have a co-host or not if it's just by yourself or you're going to have more than one person but you can have interview style uh, you can have current events um you can just be yourself just it's just by yourself it's pretty much up to you which one you feel more comfortable with like me i don't like talking by myself so i, I like having a co-host that i can feed off of and that works out better for me for those those quiet times um it's it's a lot easier for me to play off someone else than just hear myself talk uh, as you were talking before, Connie, it's really hard to talk into a camera. Uh, I mean, we'll try talking to a microphone to no one. <laughs> it's, it's really hard. So a lot of people I know script their podcast uh, just because it's very hard to, to stay on track because, because people will start drifting off into other things when they start talking about a podcast. So a lot of people do very detailed outlines or scripts in order to stay on track. But however you do it, that's your choice. It's whatever you're most comfortable with. I wouldn't say there's a right or wrong way to say you should do this format or that format, but it's totally up to you how you want to do it. Um, I know with, with some, it's just uh, like with mine, it's a current events. We just, we, we pick out articles uh, between me and my co-host and he, he'll read his article. And we'll give the opinion. I'll read mine and he'll get, well, we'll give our opinion. And that's, and that's kind of how we do it. But I know in another one that I've done, it was more just an interview style and we would just ask, we would answer questions. It'd be like a top 10 and then we either give our opinion on those top 10 questions. So you make it however you want. It's just whatever you think you're going to enjoy first, and then second, what you think other people might enjoy. Um, and if you're just doing it for yourself, then it doesn't really care. People will, you, you, if you don't focus on the audience, you may have a small audience. If you're okay with that and you love what you're doing, then, then go for it. But sometimes you have to cater to your audience, so you may have to tweak a few things. Like I know my, my co-host likes two hour long episodes, but our audience doesn't. So we had to cut back a bit to keep our audience. <laughs> so um, sometimes uh, we don't always keep to that, but I, I fight him on it all the time. So and then you have to decide after that, do you want to do monthly, weekly, daily? Well, what do you have time for? It's really about that. Of course, the more content you put out there, the more people can consume and the less people have to wait. But I've, I've generally known with podcasts, uh, a lot of people are always catching up. It's rarely, it's, and it also depends on how long your podcasts are. There's some podcasts that are only five or 15 minutes, so it's easy to consume, but there's a lot of, on average, they're about an hour. And I've always noticed there are a lot of people who, who have to catch up. So if you're going to do a, a daily or a weekly, just know that um, your audience is probably always going to be behind. You can do monthly, but then are people getting enough content that they have to wait a month where they lose interest in you. So you just have to decide also what's on your, your schedule. If you have a job, kids, whatever, it might be harder to keep that, for, keep that uh, schedule. So you have to try what's best for you. Um, but I would always go higher, like go monthly, and then you think, oh, I think I can do weekly, and then, then give your audience weekly. I wouldn't take that away, especially if you start growing an audience because people don't like change, um, and that will disappoint them. And then, as I said before, how long do you want your podcast? That's really up to you. I mean, there are history podcasts that are like five hours long. And if you're a history buff, people love it. Uh, but then there's other stuff where, you know, current events, I don't think people are going to sit down for five hours and listen to current events. So that you have, it's kind of a personal choice as well. But just know that usually an hour is about the average. Uh, anything longer than that, it, it really has to stay interesting and sustain people. And plus, I, I usually like to do like, what are people's drive time? You know, the average drive time could be like a half an hour to 45 minutes. So, and that's when a lot of people listen to their podcast or when they're cutting the grass or whatever. So you want to keep it down to whenever someone can consume it all at once while they're doing some type of task. Um, how long, <clears throat> sorry, was there a question? How long is yours? Um, on average, it's about an hour, hour and a half. And yeah. then um, based off statistics, usually people make it to about 80%. Stats, yeah. 
And, and how long is yours? Is it monthly, weekly? Oh, I'm sorry. It's weekly. Thank you. So with that, when I talked about co-host, uh, if you do have a co-host or more than one person or more than one person, you, you want to have a contract. And I know it sounds kind of weird in the beginning because, well, I'm not making any money. Well, well, what do we have to fight about? But on the off chance that you do start making money and your podcast becomes popular, that, that contract will come in handy. Why? Because what happens if that person wants to leave? Do they still own part of that? Do you still have to pay them? How are you going to separate money? Like if you monetize your channel, you get ads, some, you know, how you want to figure out, are we going to split 50, 50, or, you know, am I putting in more work? So it's only 60, 40. You really want to have those talks in the beginning. And then, you know, you can open to revisions later, but you really want to, you don't want to find out in the midst of it that you have a disagreement about it. Uh, get it early on when you're not popular, because it's a lot easier conversation than when a lot of money is involved. So you don't have to do it, but it's good advice if you're going to have a co-host or more than one person. So now the question that everybody wants to know, the biggest one is what gear do I need? And that some of this plays into environment. Um, and I, as I mentioned before, you can start a podcast with as, as little as just your phone. The difference that's going to play in, because you don't need a lot of expensive equipment. Uh, expensive equipment helps, but um, as long as you have a good recording environment, you could use something like your cell phone. So here's an example. I'm in a, a like a small bedroom. It's carpeted. It's furnished. Very little reverb uh, echo and um, no other outside noises like cars or kids or anything that you can hear. Well, I can just put my cell phone on a little little cell phone stand and talk into that and you could get amazing audio as long as you have a cell phone within the last five years. Now, let's take the same example and I'm in a room about the same bedroom, uh, hardwood floors, very little furniture. You can hear echo all over the place. You can hear the kids outside playing. Um, you hear, I'm right by traffic, so you hear the horn beeping. That phone is not going to work. That phone will pick up everything. And, and, and that's kind of where, where people kind of get very upset because they want a microphone that'll pick up their voice, but nothing else. And a microphone is designed to pick up sound. So it's doing its job. You have to make sure the microphone doesn't pick up anything you don't want it to hear. And if you can't avoid that or something happens, that's when ex more expensive gear comes into play, where either the gear that you're using will help combat some of that that noise that's around you or the software you use, the paid software you use to tweak and take out that that uh, air condition that's humming in the background or, you know, you want to tweak your voice a little bit to make it sound a little deeper, you know, different things like that. That's when that's when you start paying more money. But you can do a podcast very inexpensively if you have a good environment. I have a video posted on my Facebook page, but it talks about um, you can you can record under a thick blanket. Now, in the summer, it gets very hot, but that's great acoustically. Uh, if you have a walk-in closet with a lot of clothes, that's great. Uh, no reverb, quiet. Um, you can actually do in your, your, your car is very um, acoustic friendly. It's just you have to make sure nothing, is, it, it doesn't block out outside noise. So you want to make sure like you're in an open parking lot or something where you don't have a lot of noise around you. A car is a great place to do it. So, and then I've also, you can build a, like a little makeshift booth where it's just basically one of those little uh, fold-out rectangles and you put um, the egg crate padding, you know, that college kids use for their beds. You just cut that up, put it in there, and put your microphone in, and it's like a little little soundproof booth. And that works as well. And you can do that for under like $40. So there's a lot of different things you can do to help improve your environment so you don't have to pay for expensive gear. But if you're a tech junkie like me and just like buying toys, well, here you go. Um, I'm going to show you. Okay, so the main thing with microphones, there's only two styles of microphones. It's dynamic and condenser. Uh, there's no real... There's also ribbons and some other ones, but for the main purpose, the ones that you should be using, either dynamic or condenser. And that's that's with your cell phone, that's with the mics that you see here. Um, it, it, it's, it doesn't matter. Uh, you have to find out which one will work best for your needs, and I'll explain that. So, with that, with a dynamic, with a condenser microphone, a lot of singers use condenser microphones. Why? Because it picks up every nuance of your voice. But they also, if, you, if you've if you seen like a lot of TV shows and stuff like that, they have a nice padded room, no sound, and it's great. Um, the problem with having a condenser for your podcast is it will pick up every sound possible. So if you don't have, like I said before, a good recording environment, you will pick up those kids playing. You will pick up the traffic. You will pick up that echo. Um, so, you, so 
a lot of people don't podcast with condenser microphones. They sound great if you have a good environment, but uh, it's just, it's kind of shied away from. So that's where a dynamic mic comes, come, come into play. A lot of radio hosts will use a dynamic microphone. And if you, you get that radio sound when you, I have a mic right here, you can see if you hug the mic, uh, that, that's what it's called getting very close to it. Uh, that's how you get good sound of a dyna dynamic microphone. Because if I back up, it gets kind of tinny and, and echoey. Um, so you have to be very close to the mic. So that's why it's good for podcasting because it's a little more forgiving if you don't have a good recording environment um, because it, it, it picks up sound really well that's close, but also the closer you are to a microphone, the more you overpower those other sounds because you'll hear my voice and you won't hear those other little sounds in the background. So it's normally suggested to use a dynamic microphone when you're podcasting, but you can use either or, like I said, depending on your recording environment. And then once you've choose, chosen your microphone, um, and, and, I've, and just to give you an example, my home setup, I'd say is probably around over $1,000, uh, microphone, all the equipment. But my traveling setup is, is around, uh, uh, for two people, around $200. So it, it all depends on what you want to do with it. Um, uh, cell phone, oh, there's a question from Aaron uh, about what type of, microphone are in mic uh are in a uh, cell phones they're condenser that's why you always hear everything around you now they have noise canceling so it blocks out a lot of those noises but noise canceling comes at a price uh if you've ever if you've been on other zoom calls and some people sound robotic that's because the noise canceling is kicking in and in order to block out the noise it has to take out a little bit of your voice too so the louder the noise, the more you're going to sound robotic. So that's kind of where your cell phone comes into play. It's a condenser. It picks up everything, but it tries to also block out a lot of stuff. And the two are kind of competing. So, with the, so once you have your microphone, you want to get a recording device. Now they have they have recorders that you can that that's their only job, or you can use your laptop or an iPad or like I said, your phone. Um, I'm not a big fan of laptops. Uh, one, Windows machines, they freeze a lot. And if you're in the middle of recording and it freezes, you lose everything. It doesn't usually, it doesn't auto save. And then for Macs, a lot of them have really loud fans, which are annoying because your microphone will pick up that loud fan. Uh, so I usually shy away from stuff like that. I, iPads are pretty reliable. iPhones are pretty reliable, stuff like that. But I, I, I personally don't like them, but you can, if you're doing one person, USB mic, um, your laptop is fine. Now, if you want to hook up more than one microphone, uh, that gets a little more expensive because you can't hook up two at USB mics to one laptop. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a little difficult, so you have to get some other hardware in order for that to work, uh, but that's for another day. Uh, so a lot of times, I, I personally always use hardware. Uh, they're little recording devices that you can use to... You, all you need is an SD card and you can plug your microphones into. I'll show you that right now. There's a, there's a website called uh, kit.co and then a lot of creators put their recommendations for gear. And then on here, I have my recommendation for uh, podcasting. And then it goes from like beginner to the ultimate pro setup, like the setup that I was talking about that I have to where you could just easily just set it up with um, your iPad or like I said, a laptop or my, like I said, my personal favorite, just a recording device. And there's very little that you need. These recording devices range around uh, around two hundred dollars. If you get them used, you can get them cheaper, uh, and they're they're fine to get used on like a TV or something like that. Where I would never buy used. You can get this stuff will last forever, so you can buy them used and get them at a much cheaper rate. Um, headphones, headphones don't have to sound great. Like you don't need audiophile headphones that are three hundred dollars. You just need something that you can hear yourself clearly enough, and that is about it. So, like I said, for my traveling headset. Headset only cost me like thirty dollars, um, but my home headset is a little more than that. But that's because I, I I I have to edit a lot of other people's audio and I do videos and stuff like that. So I need a little more high tech. But really, for audio, you don't need anything that great as long because you just need to be able to hear yourself. And I can share all this stuff with you uh, in a follow up email if any of you are interested. So, and besides some other miscellaneous things like a microphone stand, XLR cable, the cable that connects the microphone to the recording device, 
that's really it. You don't need a whole lot of equipment if you want to spar out from, like I said, your cell phone. And your cell phone, if you don't want to use your cell phone micro microphone speaker, because it's not the greatest, but you can you can tweak it. Uh, they they sell very inexpensive. Uh, it's called the lavalier, a lavalier mic. Uh, usually they have a, a, a two person lavalier mic, so you can have a co host or an interview, and that works out really well. They have some inexpensive ones for like twenty dollars. Um, as all the way up to like a hundred and I've, I've used both the inexpensive ones uh the, the problem with those are they're not shielded so to give you an idea of that there's usually some some uh kind of like a tin foil within the the wire of the lavalier mic that blocks out a lot of like radio and stuff like that um if you don't the cheaper ones don't have that so if you're by a radio station basically think of that lavalier as one long antenna and you might hear a radio station through your microphone I've had that happen a few times. So I usually shy away from the cheap stuff because I travel a lot and do stuff. So I shy away from the cheap stuff because I've had that happen and I had to go buy some aluminum foil and wrap it up. Um, so it happens. So I usually just go for the expensive stuff that is shielded. So you have less of those worries, but yeah, you can, you can just get, you can get the little attachment with the two lavalier mics that'll hook up to your phone and that'll give you a little bit better audio. Um, just even spending 20 bucks on a microphone because it's dedicated than getting your cell phone that's a jack of all trades. So they didn't make one thing great, except for maybe the camera. They, they made a whole lot of different things okay. We get on time, okay. So, any questions so far? I know a couple of people had questions about gear, so I don't want to gloss over that. Oh, was there another question? Oh, yes, I will send you the info. I'll, I'll give it to Aaron and then she can uh, send it out to you. Okay, so now you have your podcast all recorded. The thing that you, um, sorry, now that you're going to start to record your podcast. So what you want to do is you want to find your software. So there's basically two versions of software. You can do paid or you can do free. As I said before, if you have a good recording environment, then the free stuff is fine, especially if you're in the Mac environment. GarageBand is great. Uh, the amount of features they give you for free is amazing. And then it's it's also user friendly. It's very easy to use. Uh, it might look overwhelming, but really a lot of the stuff is just fluff that you don't really need to use. But there are some core features in there that 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 work really well. And especially being free is amazing. Um, and then for Windows, it's something called Audacity. That's also posted in my uh, my gear site. And then it's it's not so it's not so pretty to look at. It's functional, it's good, it's easy, and it works. Um, but those are the two main ones that I would say that people use that are free. Uh, and like I said, because you're really not, if you have a good recording, you're really not doing a whole lot, but cutting out the ums, the likes, maybe putting in an intro and outro at the beginning, pre-recorded intro and outro at the beginning. Uh, but you're not really doing any major sound tweaking. Um, but if you don't have a good environment, that's when the paid software comes into play because uh, it works a lot better. It, it, there's things called plugins that you can add to the software to make them even better. Uh, and then all they're dedicated is this one little feature. So they, say you need to level your sound. That's probably the most important is leveling your sound. Um, the sound may sound great to you when you listen to it on your machine, like, oh, it's plenty loud enough. But you have to remember, people are listening to this on cell phones, cars, TVs, everywhere. And if you don't keep it, there's standards that you have to be at. If you don't keep it at a certain standard, it might not sound loud enough to someone on one of those different devices. So uh, without getting into do too much detail, you want to make sure you record your, your audio at the same level, but you want to make sure you record it at, at a higher level, a pretty high level. Uh, they're called LUFS, L-U-F-S. -L and then uh, usually uh, you want to stay within a certain range of those LUFS in order to make sure that across the board, your podcast sounds the same to everyone. And then also you want to make sure that you might record your on one machine, but then another machine, but in software, you can make sure that your podcast sounds the same across the board. Cause it's nothing like binging a podcast and then going to one episode and, Oh, I have to turn it to level five and then going to the next episode. I got to turn it to level 10. That would get annoying real fast. So you want to make sure you're always consistent and that's something you can do in software. Um, most of them can do it. Uh, the more expensive ones do a better job at it. Let's just put it that way. <clears throat> But editing a podcast is very easy. It's just highlight the section you want out and click delete. Uh, maybe a little different depending on the program, but for the most part, that's all you have to do. Uh, you just have to make sure that you can 
and, and you, you'll, you'll start to notice this. Uh, my, I, I, I joke with my co-host, and after you edit enough, I say it's, I'm kind of like the Matrix. I can see his, his ums and likes before we even get to them. Because once you, once you notice waveforms, it's, uh, <laughs> it becomes kind of telling. When you hear like a tick and some, like someone's smacking their mouth together, something like that, it's very, it's very easy to identify, and then it's, it, you can edit it very easily. Um, if you're one of the person that doesn't care, you just, that's my natural speaking. I don't care about that. Editing a podcast would take you maybe five minutes. I know a lot of people like, I just want to be natural. This is how I talk. Me, I'm the person that cuts out every um and tick and everything. So I usually say, especially in the beginning, however long your podcast is, double that. So if it's, it's going to take you an hour, if your podcast is an hour, it's going to take you two hours to edit. One, you have to listen to it. And then two, if you need to cut out everything and learning. So I would probably say double whatever your podcast, whatever the time it is for your podcast for you to start editing. Once you get comfortable, you can cut that time down. But in the beginning, if it's 15 minutes, then say you need a whole hour, half an hour to edit. So that's kind of a good rule of thumb, um, depending on how you want to be with your edits. Okay, so now we have everything recorded. When you start, you want to have, you want to make sure you practice. If you don't get to, and, and the only way you're going to practice is if you do it for real. And the reason why I say this is because when you practice, you kind of take shortcuts and you won't do it the same. So when you're practicing, you'll probably be right on the mic doing everything right. But then once you, you have other things that come into play, such as, I mean, I'm sorry, when you're just, when you're just testing, you might just, you'll, you'll, you'll talk to the mic how you want to, because it's only like two or three seconds. You just want to make sure your sound, everything's good and everything's fine. But then when you actually do your podcast, you're going to find out you have little ticks. You may start tapping your finger on the table, which will vibrate into the mic. You may pull away and then all of a sudden you get echoey and far away. You'll do a lot of things that you don't notice until you actually start doing it. Um, so I would say practice this if you're going live and record a couple episodes. You may end up tossing those episodes. My co host and I, we recorded five episodes that we, we, we ended up doing it like, on a, like our 50th episode, we did like a compilation of all, all of them. They sounded horrible, but uh, we didn't want them to go to waste. But we weren't, we were not planning on going live with those. They were just practice and they were going to get junked. But I would definitely practice live to get used to editing, get used to talking to a mic, getting proper mic technique. If you have a co-host not talking over each other, that's, that's a big problem to edit if you talk over each other. So knowing, kind of knowing your, your, your co-host. And then once you do that, you want to record, if you can do it, you want to record three to five episodes in advance, good episodes that you're, you're actually going to produce. And the reason why I say this is, say someone finds your podcast and they like it and they want to binge it. Well, if you only have one podcast, one episode out, then they got to wait a month or a week or whenever. But now if you have three or five, they have that log that they can sustain themselves until you get that next episode out. Cause like I said, they're usually going to be behind. Um, because when you look at your stats, you'll notice that you'll have a lot of people looking, uh, listening to your older episodes than when your newest release. It's just, it's nature of the beast because people are busy and they may have other podcasts, whatever that they're listening to. Um, so you want to make sure, you, if you can, if you have like a current events like we did, it was a little bit harder. But if it's something where it's not time-based, I would definitely suggest three to five podcasts in advance that you can release all at the same time. You could still do episode one, two, three, four, five, but release them all at the same time so people can binge watch and binge listen until you can put out that next episode. The other thing with that is you want to determine your release date and time. So say I'm going to record on Thursday and I want to release on Friday. Well, do you have enough time to record, edit, and then get it all published by the next day between everything that goes on with life? So you might want to play around with that because I know when I first started, I had to we had to tweak the days just because of family obligations. There was no way I could edit two hours. Um, things just come up. So play around with that. You may have to tweak some things, but uh, you need to determine when you want to release and you don't want to change that. And if you do change it or you, you're delayed, you want to let your audience know. Uh, and that's through social media. So a lot of times if my if our episode is going to be delayed, we will post it on our website and on um on uh, Facebook, because that's where most of our audiences is, is on Facebook. And we'll let them know, hey, no episode today. It's going to come out tomorrow. So you because consistency is the key. And if you're not consistent, then people won't know 
how to listen to you, when to listen to you, and they'll get bored and go to someone else who is more consistent. So now that you have all of that, you want to... So this is kind of debatable. It depends on how you want to take it, but you want to buy a URL for your podcast. Whether you're going to use it or not, I would buy it. And the first year, they usually heavily discount it, so it's only like maybe $10, $20 to buy a URL. One, you want to make sure if you think, if you think you want to move forward with it, it'll be available. Because there are a lot of people out there to just go hunting for URLs and successful businesses and to see if they, if they own their name. And if they don't, they buy it. And then if you come to that like, oh, I really want to start a website where I could have gotten it for 20, this person's now selling, I'll sell it to you for a thousand. Um, when, when the dot com came into beginning, that happened quite a bit with like larger companies like Best Buy and Apple and stuff like that. People bought up names and they had to pay high prices for them. So just get it. Even if you don't use it, you've only out $20. You have it for the whole year. Um, but then if you do keep it, it will cost you a little bit more, maybe like 40 or so, depending on what the name is. But it's, it's, it's always good just to have it in your back pocket if you think you want to use it. But if you do, then you can set up your website. Um, you know, there's tons of places you can either pay to have it done or you can go to places like uh, Squarespace and build your own. Totally up to you. Uh, the other thing you want to do is you want to determine a hosting company. The hosting company is where your podcast is going to live. It, I know that you can, you can find it on Spreaker, Spotify, all these other places, but there ha there's a place where your podcast actually is housed and that's going to be your hosting company. Uh, it could be uh, uh, Blueberry, Lipsons, Spreaker, uh, Podbean. There's tons of them. It's, it's really up to you what you want to choose uh, based off of price and how much storage you need. So those are really the deciding factors is price and storage. Um, if you're a very short podcast, uh, sky's the limit. You can pretty much go to any of them. If you're a long podcast that does a lot of episodes, that's when you're going to have to determine because uh, some have unlimited, but you have to pay a higher price. Some have a certain a storage quota, but it's lower. So which one in the long run is better for you? Now, are you tied to a certain hosting company? No. But the one thing I would say, and some of you may have heard of Anchor. Anchor is a free uh, podcasting, a podcasting host that you can, you can upload to. And a lot of people do it because it's easy and it's free. Uh, one thing that I always like to remind people, if you're not paying for a product, you are the product. Um, Anchor is very good because it's easy, but I don't like some of their, their terms of service because it's free and they can do whatever they want with your podcast. So, but a lot of people use it and are happy with it and it's fine. That's it's just a personal preference for me. And then some of these other companies that I mentioned, they do have a free plan, but at some point, um, if you continue with it, you will have to go to a paid plan because your free space will run out. Uh, I see. A, so do you need to post same day and same time? So what do you mean by, well, here, I think I can answer that. So I would post same day. Um, and then usually generally I, uh, we post same time, but you can pre-schedule it. So, so to give you an idea of what, uh, what I do is I record on Friday and then I have until Tuesday at like five, which I'm late today, Tuesday at five to get, uh, the edited podcast to my co-host, my co-host then he, he does a double check for me. He listens to it and then he schedules it for midnight tonight. And so that's kind of how we do it. So I, you don't have to post it same time, but the, the, the thing that happens is, um, with these whole hosting companies. So say you go, we, like we use Spreaker, your, your podcast is hosted on Spreaker and then iTunes will go every 24 hours and say, Hey Spreaker, do you have a new episode? No. Okay. I'll check back in 24 hours or hey it's there okay and we found around i think like one in the morning or something uh apple does it so that's why we do midnight so you don't have to post every time but if you're more consistent then whoever whoever's grabbing it will always get it at the same time so that's why i would do same day same time but you can pre-schedule them so you don't have to sit there and and wait and like oh i need to wait till midnight to press the button you can pre-schedule it so you can go to sleep and it'll do its own thing uh, who do you use for your hosting? I use um, Spreaker. Uh, that one worked out the best for us at the time. Uh, we seem to have ran out of space. So we were kind of debating on what we want to do. And you're, you're also not tied to one company. You just want to make sure if any of those companies, it's called a 301 redirect. Most of them do. Anchor didn't for a long time, but they finally did. 
I don't think SoundCloud does. Um, but it's called the 301 redirect. So basically what they do is say you start off on company A and the first five of your podcasts are on company A, but then, oh, I want to go to company B. So anyone who subscribed to company A, if you didn't have a 301 redirect, they would never see your new episodes at company B. So, but if you have, if they have that 301 redirect, it tells people, hey, the, all the other new episodes are over here, go here. And then that's, and that's what you want. It's, it's usually pretty common, but some of, if you, if there's some new sites that come up, hosting companies that come up, need to make sure that they have 301 redirect or you will never see it. Or same, then vice versa. Um, if you're with company B now and there was no 301 redirect, the, comp, um, the people who subscribe to company B will never see those first five episodes. So that's why you, you need to make sure that whatever hosting you go with, if you ever, if you ever decide to change, you just want to know they have a 301 redirect. So people can still retain all your episodes. Um, and then Tuesday at 10 a.m. Tuesday at 10 is fine. As long as you're consistent with Tuesday at 10 a.m., go right ahead. Um, I just, like I said, uh, I, I believe iTunes uh, does it in the morning, so your, your show may not post until the next day. But you can play around with it. Um, the first one or two episodes won't make a big deal, um, but once you get that, once you get it finalized after the first couple episodes, kind of stick to that. Do they all feed the same podcast app? <sighs> I will get to that. That is a, a very tricky one that I'll explain to you. Um, actually, I think we're up. That's actually up next. So you want to launch your podcast. Um, this is the kind of thing that goes along with that. So I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, so this is something I put together uh, for a couple of clients because people kept asking me. So once you get, so say you use a hosting company, Spreaker, for instance, you're really only on Spreaker. So no one will find you anywhere else at the moment. You're only in Spreaker. So people would have to go to Spreaker because it's basically its own podcast player as well. You'd have, they'd have to go there and listen to your podcast. Now, in order to get it spread out to all over the, all over the place, you have to, you don't have, well, I'll give you both options. So Spreaker and most hosting companies will post your podcast to iTunes spotify pandora some places for you i don't like that because sometimes you have it becomes the middleman effect where you can't if you have an issue with itunes you can't direct you sometimes you can't directly talk to itunes you have to go through your hosting company and talk to itunes itunes and that becomes a problem so i like being able to go directly to to them if there's an issue so i usually don't like to use the automatic um we'll, we'll sign you up to apple google or whatever so you can, it's not a big deal, but, uh, cause some places now it's gotten better where you can claim it. So the, uh, the hosting company doesn't have control over it. You do. Um, but not all of them do that. But anyways, so this is a list of pretty much everywhere that you can put your podcast. Cause like I said before, you're only at your hosting company until you, you tell iTunes to post it on there. And basically what you get is something called an RSS feed. It looks pretty much like a web address, just slightly different. And that web address will tell all these places, hey, come to Spreaker and look for a new episode, like I mentioned before. And so you would, so you would go to iTunes and, um, I, yeah, they changed it to iTunes. You go to iTunes and then you give them your name, email, RSS feed, all of that. And then it takes a couple days to get approved. And then now you're on iTunes. The reason why iTunes is first is because it's the most popular. So pretty much everyone, 99%, <laughs> of the internet feeds off of iTunes. So if you get on, if you do nothing else, get on iTunes. And then after that, Spreaker, Stitcher, Google Play, Amazon, um, I'd say the top 10. If you did these top 10, you would be fine. Now, if you're bored and crazy like me, you can do the remaining uh, 20 something. But the further down you go, the smaller your audience is. So, in, so it, you may only reach uh, 25,000 people for this one. So it's just, is it really worth your time? I mean, one listen is better than nothing. But if you just stick to the first top five, but uh, I usually say top 10, if you can just take, do it one day at a time. And all you have to do is just put in your email, telephone number, not telephone number, email, name, and then the RSS feed. And then you would be covered for pretty much anywhere anyone listens. So as I mentioned before, you want to promote your podcast because it's going to be very hard to find 
I mean, hit up your friends, put it on Facebook, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. The, the problem with that is your podcast may, may not be their thing. So you might get one or two listens, but, or just because they're family or friends, they'll listen to it, but they won't stay consistent. So, which you, you may want to put some money into it. Do Facebook ads. Facebook ad is really good. Uh, if you want to put a little money into it, just because you, you can, it's scary how much they know about you and how much you can segment it down. I want 25 to 30 people who listen to podcasts that uh, are into finance and are only male. Like that's how far you can go down with Facebook ads if you want to. Um, and then you can do uh, Google ads with YouTube ads. You can do a video if, if you, that's your thing. Um, or if you want to go the free route, I always suggest for people to go to different forums. Like if you're going to do travel, there's tons of travel forums. Now, um, you just don't want to spam and say, hey, check out my, my podcast, but you want to add value. So say there's someone, someone in there that's asking a question that your podcast answers. So you don't have to lie and say it's the greatest podcast ever. And you don't really have to tell them it's yours, but just say, hey, you know, that, that question you had, this episode covers that. You might want to listen to it. And just as simple as that, drop it in there. Maybe other people will see it too and want to come. So there's, there's different ways you can do to promote your podcast, but you are going to have to do a little legwork because it's, it's going to take some time for people to find you, especially if you don't have any name recognition or anything like that. So um, know that if you just put your podcast out, it could take a while before you get any listens. Um, and then my last piece of advice is one, always listen to your podcast every episode just to make sure you're getting better. If you hire someone else to edit is what I'm, I'm mentioning. Um, but then all, also listen to other people's podcasts, especially in your niche. And that's because you will find out what you like about their podcast and what you don't like. And you can apply that to yours. For example, if you listen to a podcast and they have a 10 minute intro and you're like, why do they have a 10 minute intro? You know, only to make your intro a couple seconds. So you'll learn a lot of stuff if you can just listen to a couple more. But uh, I think I have five minutes left to open it up to questions. Uh, hold on. I think there was some other stuff. Is this a one-time thing or do you have to do for each episode? What is that question for, Aaron? Uh, for the RSS feed, so the iTunes and all that. Uh, once you do it once, it'll, 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 it it's, it's automatic after that. Okay. I had so to, you only, the one you I use to, is I'm number sorry. 20. I says I had to laugh because the one I use is number 24 on your list. <laughs> oh, sorry. But your, your, um, your podcast is on there, so you must have done the whole list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> um, and then uh, do you use hashtags to put your stuff out there? Uh, uh, I know with Spreaker, you have like hashtags and metadata. So for each episode, for your overall podcast, you have to put like um, descriptors. Uh, and then also for each individual episode, you have to do that. So that is that point is where you could use hashtags. Um, I, I personally don't use hashtags that often. Um, not for my podcast, at least. YouTube I do because it's a better search engine. Uh, but until they improve the search engine, uh, I, I just do what's built into my hosting, but I don't do anything further than that. Like put it in the, I don't really put it into the description or anything like that. Um, the, but the, the one thing I, that you did bring up or brings up to mind is make sure you have solid descriptions because all that gets feeds into Google and the, the interweb. And uh, when people are looking for certain things, your descriptions in your, for your podcast or for your, your individual episodes are, will be out there. So if you hit, so make sure you're very descriptive in your description about what the episode is or what your podcast is about, because when people search for certain things that will come up, that is metadata um, associated with your podcast. So you want to make sure you're very descriptive when you do put stuff out there is because that could be another way they find you is they're searching for, you know, investment advice and whatever keywords you had in your description stuck out and Google will populate that for them. Anything else? Did I answer everything? <laughs> like I said, um, if there's anything you want to deep dive into more, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, Aaron has my contact information. Uh, but then if there is interest in something else and the collective people want, I can set up another one of these as well. It does have to be in the evening because I do work during the day. I know a lot of people like the noon time. Thank you very much, Derek. Very good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Derek, a lot. A lot of good information. Okay.
Uh, let's see. Monica asked if there's a good website to learn more. Um, other resources. When I first started, YouTube helped a lot. Uh, that's where I got a lot of my information. Um, you can, you could put in how to start a podcast and, and they'll go through similar information that I did. It's just when you want to get to the nitty gritty editing software and what mics do I get? That's when it kind of starts branching out into this whole other thing. So, um, if there's something specific that you want to know, I could, I could direct you to a, f a couple channels that I follow that have really good information. Um, overall, there are some podcasting ones. I, I find them to be a little dry because they talk about a lot of different things. But uh, actually, I can't give you one. He's actually in Akron. He actually does meetups. His name is Dave Jackson. Um, he actually does live in Akron. He's, he's, he's been podcasting forever. He's kind of known uh, nationwide. Um, that's probably one that I would start. He has his tons of podcasts. He has his YouTube channel, a website. It's called uh, The School of Podcasting. I would check that one out. That's probably the most entertaining not dry that i've i've heard that's really centered around podcasting um but a lot of the other ones that i follow are like how to get better audio i guess you could say which aren't really tied to um podcasting in general just improving your audio or how to storytell like i i i listen to or watch a lot of different things um that aren't really podcasts but will help me with my podcast and other things like my youtube channel that's great information thank you so much oh no problem yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time, Derek. I will um, send out this recording. I'll post it on YouTube and send the link. And then uh, Derek, you can give me that other information. I'll include that in a follow up email for everybody. Yes, I will send that uh, to you tonight with uh, the review of a newsletter. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.